Okay, dah live. Boleh start. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Hello everyone and welcome to What is Innovation? Innovation Value Chain Webinar. Program 1, Session 2 of Bernas. Before we continue, let me introduce myself. My name is Nor Laili and I am a lecturer at the Faculty of Engineering and Life Science Fairs, UNICEF. And I will be the moderator for today's session. With us today, we have two panels. Uh, Dr. Ahmad Shazi, Associate Director at Dagan Holdings, Technology Director, Shazi uh, Innovation Solution. And Dr. Hazi Hazwan, Deputy Dean Academic for Center of Graduation and General Study, CFGS uh, UNICEF. In the next course of two hours, uh, Dr. Rahmat Shazi and Dr. Hazi Hazwan will talk about uh, four main points. Uh, they are number one, what is the innovation value change? What phase make up the value change? What characterize the different phases? How do you apply the knowledge into everyday learning? So before we continue, let me brief you some information on Bernas. So Bernas is actually the continuation of uh, the ICC program in year uh, 2020 under the Selangor government. So the purpose is actually to cultivate the culture of science, technology, and innovation in Selangor. So in this program, a series of courses and training will be given to final year project students in the field of information technology and multimedia, business management, engineering and life science at Quiz and also UNICEF. So this training is very crucial to ensure their valuable technical ideas won't fall into the innovation uh, value of that. Okay, so throughout the, win the webinar, feel free to ask any question that you have using the chat or comment box. So Dr. Rahma and Dr. Hazik will try their best to answer all the questions at the end of the session. So without further delay, it's my uh, great pleasure to introduce to, to our first panel, Dr. Hazid Hazwan. So Dr. Hazid, let me introduce first. Uh, Dr. Hazid holds a Bachelor of Science in Biotechnology Industry from UNICEF. He obtained his PhD in Chemistry from Imperial College London, UK. Currently, he is the Deputy Dean Academic for the Center of Graduation and General Studies at uh, UNICEF. He also obtained many awards and medals from various research, research expos and exhibition. So let's welcome Dr. Hazi Hazwan. Over to you, uh, Dr. Hazi. Thank you, uh, moderator. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera. So uh, first of all, uh, let me try to share my slide first. One second. So can you see the slide? Yes. Uh, all right, thank you. thank you. Okay, so uh, so first of all, uh, before I go further, uh, as mentioned by the moderator, so my name is Dr. Hazi Hazim Azman. So uh, besides uh, the Deputy Dean, I'm also the STEM UNICEF coordinator. Uh, however, uh, I feel like, I mean like, uh, I feel like I'm still very young in this innovation industry, especially as compared to Dr. Rahmat. Uh, but uh, I, I can share my experience and uh, for today and uh, based on uh, my experience participating in several innovation competitions. So I received uh, four goals, uh, four consecutive goals since 2018 in Malaysia Technology Expo and also uh, various uh, higher education institute innovation competition uh, such as in UITM, uh, UUM, UMK. So all together, uh, uh, I received, uh, me and my team, we received six gold, seven silvers, and three bronze so far, Alhamdulillah. And my research uh, interest is uh, in lignocellulose biomass. So lignocellulose biomass, uh, including switchgrass uh, in Malaysia, especially uh, this, uh, the oil palm plantation. And then uh, I also uh, uh, do research in ionic liquids. So ionic liquid is one of the uh, emerging technology in the insolvent industry. Uh, and then uh, I also have interest in rhodococcus. So this rhodococcus, if I can share, is uh, one of the um, uh, biotechnological agent because we can use it for bioremediation, for biodegradation. So it's mainly because of its two main characteristics. 
Uh, one is uh, this particular microbe can grow in adverse conditions. So you can found it in, uh, in volcanic area, as well as a very low temperature in the Arctic area. So, so this, uh, um, the, the ability of it growing in the adverse condition make it uh, uh, desirable in the industry. And then number two is because uh, of its uh, uh, um, versatile metabolic pathway. So it has so many various enzymes that we can exploit uh, in the industry, especially in the textile industry uh, and chemical industry. Uh, and then uh, one more thing, uh, my interest is in STEM education. And this is where uh, I met Dr. Rahmat, our second panelist. So, so uh, I start venturing in uh, promoting STEM uh, when I came back from PhD in UNICEF since 2016. So that's a little bit of uh, my background. So let's let's go ahead to uh, the topic today. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm sure if you have participated in the first session, you 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 have seen this figure, uh, and I hope you are familiar with it by now. So this is the innovation value chain, uh, distilled from the Oslo Manual. Uh, so what I'll be covering is the first two, uh, which is the problem identification as well as the idea generation. So these are the two uh, main um, uh, important part, uh, uh, the, initial, the initial part of innovation, uh, where you, you want to find the right issue that you need to tackle. And you want to be sure that uh, uh, these are something that is worth exploring. So it is very crucial in the beginning that you, you, you find the real problem uh, and, and we go forward from there. Okay, so uh, when we look at problem identification, so basically I have problem identification, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, the sense of awareness uh, of a research uh, on a prevalent social problem, a social phenomenon or a concept that is worth studying. Meaning that uh, uh, usually uh, when we talk about uh, whether this is a problem or not, uh, it is something that is a big challenges or issue to the society or, or in a small context, maybe uh, issue in your workplace or, or uh, in your community. So, so that, that is something that, you, uh, that can be uh, a source of your problem identification. And then uh, it can also uh, be a, as a big social phenomenon or some uh, a bigger issue in the national level or international level. So that is also something um, uh, as a source for uh, to identify the problem or any concept that is maybe well established, but there are some uh, loophole or, or things that you find that oh maybe uh, or we can uh, improve this concept or there is. Uh, an area that, that you sh we should uh, look into. Uh, so, so those are the things that we have to look, uh, or we have to explore when we want to identify problem. And, and, and a problem, uh, especially in a research context, uh, it should be something that uh, require investigation. So for us to understand, for us to explore and, and look into. And how we want to find uh, the research problem uh, is based on these uh, four factors. So the first one is observation. So when, when, you, when, when you are uh, at work, so you look at um, uh, so there are some issue uh, with your friends or, or, or the business or even observation in at home. And when you look at your mom struggling with some work, so, so maybe you, oh, maybe I can help with this kind of issue or maybe, oh, why don't we do like this? Uh, so, so those are based on observation. And then number two is it is based on knowledge. So usually uh, when you are in certain um, uh, expert uh, in a certain field, so you can use your expertise uh, to discover knowledge, uh, an, an issue or a challenge. And then number three is wisdom. So this one, usually we use our common sense uh, to realize there is an issue there or there is a problem there. And last one is skills. So skills, usually it is based on your experience. So based on your experience, you gain skill. And from that, uh, you, you will find out if there is a problem or an issue. Okay. So, so in order to identify the right problem, so there are five things that I would like to share today. 
So these five things is important so that you you find the exact problem, the root cause. Okay, as uh, yesterday my friend uh, Dr. Rahmat shared with me about uh, there was like uh, someone come over to him talking about oh we have an uh, a problem uh, a storage problem so how can we get this uh, food to to uh, uh, the storage uh, extend shelf life up to two weeks whereas actually the real issue is the transportation so so that is one of the things that I, uh, that um, the scenario that we can see so if you couldn't find the right or the root cause of the problem you may solve the wrong uh, challenge the wrong issue and you will end up with more problem in the future okay so so these five things are the first one is the deductions from theory so this one um, based on uh, social philosophy or general generalization embodied in life and society that the researcher is familiar with so so when sometimes uh, when you look at one issue and based on your experience or maybe um, because uh, because you 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 are in that uh, uh, sometimes uh, if I can give you an example so someone who are in the market when you look at the there is an issue and then you feel like oh uh, yesterday uh, I I can solve this problem with different scenarios so maybe I can apply the same issue with this scenario so you use your deduction and logical thinking to find the problem and to develop your hypothesis. So that is the first uh, the first way to do it, and then number two is uh, interviewing practitioners. So when you discuss whether it's formally or informally through discussion with the expert in the field, then uh, you will get the real world problem uh, or things that you can look into uh, that worth exploring uh, as a research. Okay, so these are two main. Uh, a way that usually uh, we encounter, especially, uh, especially as a student when, when you want to develop uh, a research, okay? And then number three, one second. Number three is uh, you usually, when, when someone got a Nobel Prize, normally when they share their story, it's a very interesting story and usually it is uh, related to their personal experience. Uh, so based on the personal experience is where you, you, you find the problem. So uh, if you look here, this is the picture of 3M post-it sticky note. This is very popular, right? So the story behind it is actually uh, uh, the, the, the person who first uh, look into, uh, uh, they, they want to find a very strong adhesive, okay? So, but they couldn't, when they, they, they develop this adhesive, it is not as strong. It is very uh, loose and weak. Um, so he shared he shared this with his friends and his friend known as Arthur Fry. So he has an issue because when he go to the church, he he tried to bookmark uh, his uh, musical note or the books uh, for in church, but he couldn't um, let it stick with the bookmark. So when his friend talk about this, uh, oh, I, I have a very uh, weak adhesive. So and he have the problem. So with his problem, he used his friend's uh, idea to invent these post-it notes. So that is where it started. And now sticky note is very famous everywhere. So all everyone use it. So, so, so the issue started with the personal experience of that uh, utter fright experience. And from there, they come up with the research and the idea and the innovation. All right. And then number four, uh, based on re relevant literature. So this is very common for ac academicians. So we read literatures to find um, uh, a gap of a, res a research gap. So there are a lot of different sources that we can refer to, such as Corpus and Web of Science, and as well as um, the free database in Google Scholar. So these are the main um, uh, source to find papers uh, and research articles and from there uh, you read usually we start by reading uh, people's uh, review paper uh, to find the research gap and then you you, you the more you read uh, the more uh, you learn and 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 then you can uh, design the pro the problem statement okay and then the last part is this one so interdisciplinary perspective. So uh, right now, more, more, more than before, it is, uh, it is 
uh, important for us to look into other field. So it is not just, uh, especially students, uh, they have this mindset, oh, I'm, I, I like biology, so I don't like physics. Uh, I like physics, but I don't like biology. But you, ha you have to be aware, especially now with the, uh, the big data uh, coming through. So it is important, um, uh, especially like people in, in physics, so they learn from biology. And people in biology, they have to look into knowledge in physics and chemistry. So that's why we have, you know, for, for, information, uh, for example, bioinformatics. So bioinformatics is actually, uh, there are two body of expertise in there. Uh, so the field of uh, IT as well as uh, biology. So, so when you have this interdisciplinary perspective, it helps you to come up with the right problem. And from there, you, you design your research and then that will come, uh, the solution will come with an innovation. So the example here that I would like to share, uh, this article is from New Scientist in 2004. So uh, I'm sure you know Philips. So the Philips, uh, uh, Philips company, so they back, back then in 90s, they, they tried to find a way to, to, to increase the quality of audio. So they designed, um, uh, uh, they designed a sort of like, uh, I don't know how it looks like, but it's an equipment with 70 micrometer holes. So it's a very small hole, uh, but, but they end up, uh, they couldn't come up with the product with that, but the idea is there, the innovation is there. Uh, sorry, uh, so, so, so it remained like that, but then uh, a beer company, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the name is Fluxon. So they use that, uh, the 70 micrometer uh, filtration filter, they use that to uh, in the beer industry and they found out by using that they get a clearer beer. So, so by looking in other industry, they find their solution to solve their problem. So there is, uh, there is one example of uh, interdisciplinary perspective. So these are the first five that, uh, that I'm sharing with you. I think the next one, okay. Uh, okay. So this is uh, currently they call it bi biomimicry. So it, this is, I think, a uh, kind of new term, especially in Malaysia, because uh, all this while uh, we just use the term biotechnology as a big, uh, big, big field name. So biomimicry is basically when, when you get the idea or technology based on the nature. Okay, so you look at, for example, here, uh, the Falcon jet. So they, they, they developed that to look like a Falcon so that uh, it can fly very fast, steadily and quietly. Okay, and then um, picture number two there, the Shinkansen high-speed train. So the front, if you look at uh, the, the front part of the train, it looks like the beak of Kingfisher. So, so that's how uh, they, they come up with the design. And then picture number three, that is uh, shark. So the, the shark skin, actually, if you look um, uh, at, in, at a microscopic level, it, it is actually, uh, it is not as smooth as we thought. So this design helped the fish uh, move very fast. So they tried to apply this design for, for swimmers, the swimsuit, so that they can swim faster. Uh, and even now, if I'm not mistaken, Boeing is looking at, uh, the to to make the um, uh, sorry I, I'm not sure whether it's Boeing or Airbus but the the aeroplane they look at the uh, surface of their plane to look to 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 be like sharp so so that the fly can can fly uh, faster okay and then uh, the picture down there I'm sure you you've seen velcro before so that was uh, inspired by uh, the plants uh, Bardani okay. And then the Airbus uh, A350, so they try to look into flat wing, uh, uh, similar to the uh, wing of Eagle. So these are some of the examples uh, of biomimicry. So, so in order to solve the problem, they look into the nature. And there are more if you, uh, for example, like uh, synthetic silk, so inspired by the spider silk. So uh, if, you, if you go uh, research by yourself online, you'll find more and more example of biomimicry. And that has, uh, that has been commercialized. Um, so, so the point here is that 
uh, when when in order to find a problem and you, in order to ensure whether it is worth exploring or not, you look into uh, you can look into the nature as as the inspiration. Okay, so the second part of our, the first one is identifying the problem, and the second part is idea generation. So what I want to share out here here is that. Uh, ha having many ideas uh, and uh, it is great. So when, when you have a problem, it is not uh, uh, when you just have one idea to solve the problem and that's it, no, okay? It is good to have more than one ideas to brainstorm uh, what kind of uh, way to tackle the problem, the challenges, because that illustrate an abundance of creativity. And we need, we need this creativity, okay? Uh, especially in the early stage. Uh, so being creative, uh, exploring uh, something that is not common is good because then only you can find um, a, a great innovation. So when you uh, generate the idea, the first step is uh, you need to take the opportunity because sometimes you, you look at, oh, uh, I think I can do this. And that's it. You didn't, you didn't explore that. Okay, so you have to take an initiative to act upon an opportunity. Okay, it's not just, oh, I, I because some people are, oh, I, I can do this, I can do that, but you, you didn't do it. Okay, so it's not good, um, it's not good uh, just by uh, spilling out your ideas. Okay, you have to explore it. And then number two, when you have one idea, discuss with others, okay? Discuss with the expert uh, in the field, discuss with, uh, as a student, you may discuss with not just your supervisor, you can talk with different lecturers, uh, maybe they have different perspective for your research, okay? So let the idea mature, okay? And then number three is worthiness. Uh, with that idea, you have to figure out if the idea is worth pursuing or not, okay? Sometimes maybe maybe it, it sounds good, but it is not practical. So you have to really be sure whether it is worth or not to explore. Okay, and then uh, one way to, to generate idea uh, or brainstorming, there are three different uh, ways to do it, okay? So the first one is in-house. So you, you do the brainstorming within your own research group, with your lecturer, with people in that particular uh, field of expertise, okay? And then number two is cross-pollination. So what it means by cross-pollination, as I mentioned before, it is important to have multidisciplinary perspective, okay, that interdisciplinary perspective. So you have to talk with people from different background, different expertise to brainstorm the idea. And then number three is external sourcing. So don't just talk with people in the university, talk with people in the industry if it's possible, or talk with even people, even your family, okay? Maybe they, they have a different perspective, a different idea that is worth exploring. So this is how you want to generate more ideas because remember, um, you need to, it, it, you should have more than one idea. It's not just one idea. To, to tackle your problem, okay? So I think uh, I stop for now uh, and then uh, uh, I'll pass it to the moderator. Thank you. Finally, mute. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hazi, for such uh, nice uh, information. Uh, okay, so before we continue with Dr. Rahmat, uh, I would like to ask one question for you. So uh, can Dr. Hazi explain what are the raw materials for the innovation value change? The, the raw materials, sorry? Mm. Yes, the raw material for the innovation value change. What are they? You mean? Um, uh, so, what add... is the main, uh, okay. main important uh, part of the innovation uh, value change? Okay. So, so as as you look at the the figure, it started with uh, idea generation and problem. Uh, sorry, it start with pro identifying the problem and idea generation. So that is the main key before you pursue the innovation chain. So you look at uh, if it's the right problem to tackle and if it's uh, and you have the right idea to solve the problem. So at the initial stage is very crucial uh, before you climb the stairs uh, for for 
for further stage of the innovation. Did I yes, answer so, your question? <laughs> so meaning the people is actually the uh, the raw material for the innovation value chain, right? So meaning our, stud our students, our final year student is also the, the, the important part of the innovation value change as a, they need to generate that uh, innovative ideas for the uh, coming um, their job, right? Yes, these, so, these students. So, so, yes. so you, you are the one who gonna play roles for the future. So, so you it's it's important at, at this stage for uh, to train them. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for those uh, uh, innovative uh, for the informative uh, insight. So now uh, let's continue with our uh, second panel, Dr. Rahmat Iskandar Khairul. Uh, Shazi. So before um, I pass to Dr. Rahmat, so let me introduce uh, Dr. Rahmat graduated with a degree in mechanical engineering from uh, UMIS Manchester and obtained his PhD in business from University of Queensland, uh, Brisbane. Currently, he is the technology director of uh, Shaz Innovation Solution, as well as the member of the board of trustees uh, that oversaw the innovation management of the coronavirus mobile test combat unit uh, to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, currently he is also the industry advisory panel for the uh, nine universities and also an active member of the National STEM Association. He is a member of the Australia Malaysia Business Council and while in Australia working as a part-time consultant uh, the chairman of the Malaysia Scientific uh, Diaspora from 2013-2014. So uh, Dr. Rahmat is also supporting several innova innovation initiatives for the newly formed Selangor Innovation and Culturation Committee. So let's welcome uh, Dr. Rahmat Shazi to take us through the topic of uh, innovation value change. Over to you, Dr. Rahmat. Thank you very much, Manaili. Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning, ladies and gentlemen, especially to our VIPs, you, students, and the audience. You are the VIPs. You are the very important people in our sessions. Yeah? And I guess normal a VIP, sometimes they come late. <laughs> Which is something we want to actually change. Yeah. But that's, I mean, just a segue into what is required in innovation times. It's the behavior. It's not necessarily about the technology. As Dr. Hazik mentioned just now, there are methods to actually ascertain what are the problems we should be tackling. But that's just documentation. To make it happen, yeah? To refine the ideas, to get resources, and then to actually make it happen, a lot of it is actually related to behaviors. Behaviors, yeah? And that's something we ought to measure. But I'm getting, getting ahead of myself here. So just quickly, allow me to actually share my slides so everybody can take a look at, or rather get a feel as to what I'll be mentioning. Um, so everybody can see the front slide, yeah? Visible, yeah? Okay, it says participant can now see your application. But please do let me know if at any time what I say isn't clear or indeed if, for example, um, the slides are not moving. So moving on to the second slide, I would like to just take this opportunity to refresh our memory about what was spoken about last week. So last week we talked about the innovation ecosystem, what are the issues that we face. But bearing in mind, these issues are not only in Malaysia, yeah? It's not only in Malaysia. Same issues are observe, observed in Australia, in the United States, in Japan. So we are not really unique in experiencing these issues. What's unique is how we tackle them. Ah, so that's the uniqueness of our session. Why you should attend the next Bernas webinars, because we'll be talking about innovation, the innovation value chain in the Malaysian context. Yeah. Uh, so quickly, I, uh, last week we talked about the combat, how in collaborating or in managing the communication and behaviors of almost 200 Malaysians, uh, professionals all over the world supported to create this. This was designed and built within 22 days during the first MCO and then commercialized within another month. So Malaysia boleh, 
Or as Mr. Robes Young, Tuan Robes Young last week said, Malaysia pun boleh. Ya, pun boleh. But we want to make sure that there is continu continuity, ada kesinambungan. Bukan sekadar jago kampung. Yeah? So right now, we are actually talking with Australian clients to actually get this out there. So just quickly unpacking some of the issues. Last week, we talked about the definition of innovation, the elements that must be there for something to be an innovation. Yeah, Novelty aspect, there are end users all available in the market. Yeah? So please don't actually ignore these because this is very important. So you can see and know what is an innovation, what isn't an innovation. And we had a chat about, for example, some examples of innovation, also VUCA, yeah, how innovations help us tackle volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. So this is a very important concept in business, in industries. We hope that the students will be familiar with this. So next time when you hear somebody, when you are in a big high corporate meeting, somebody say a VUCA, you know what it means. Uh, you know that it's volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. Uh, because it's uh, new problems, innovations will help you tackle BUCA. Yeah? And very critical during emergencies. We saw that during the pandemic. And if, as a matter of fact, we're not out yet. So, and then we talked about some examples of uh, some ideas and products, services, which are innovations, which are not. And then we take a look at Oh, this is just some of our clients. Now let's talk, talk about the idea championing. Let's understand what it is and what are the challenges that we typically experience. So idea championing essentially is, I mean, just now Dr. Hazik talked about where you can find ideas in identifying problems, yeah? Pro identifying problems. So now why is there a need to actually champion ideas to, sub to tackle those problems? So here they are. So what led the need for idea championing? There's dissatisfaction. We are not satisfied with what we have. What we have right now, Alhamdulillah, it's good. Yeah, the technologies that we have right now, they're not bad. They're quite good to actually help us tackle our issues. But it's not good enough. And especially when challenges come our way. Challenges here. Let me change the point. Here's the point. So challenges, yeah? Like when the pandemic came about, it wasn't just one or two countries. It's the whole globe. The whole globe got whacked into pandemic mode. So challenges come by and we can't tackle these pandemics or indeed these challenges with all methods. Try as we may, it just won't work. So we need to come up with new methods. Hence, we see vaccines, we see methodologies of diffusing the vaccines. We saw standard operating procedures, which sometimes doesn't become standard anymore, which is a thing. Which is that itself is a challenge in itself because it's people behavior. Ah, there we go, people's behavior. So challenges. So there will be new needs because of these challenges. There are opportunities for new products, but but we always have limited resources, ladies and gentlemen. Compared to the size of you know, human beings, yes, there's there the millions of tons of oil, there's millions of tons of, of iron, aluminum, whatever, right? but they're still limited. They are still finite. We can't regenerate them easily. Yes? And they are, of course, related items with all these elements. So the challenge to actually get new ideas across is that because they are new, product baru, because they are new, we, have, we are not familiar with them. And what we are not familiar with, we don't really trust it. I think that goes to say, I believe that goes without saying, yeah? Something new, hey, should we really use it? Of course, there are those who are, you know, are product adopters. They like to try out new ideas, but they only make up about 5% of us. So the rest of us, we don't really trust new ideas straight away. So this issue here, this lack of trust in new ideas, means we need to champion ideas. Somebody needs to go up there, to go out there to actually explain to the people, hey, this is the problem we have. Here's a novel idea, use it. Idea champion. Yeah. Idea champion. Now, without idea championing, we know for a fact, yeah, we know for a fact there's tons of publications into uh, in research into innovation management that showed that a lot of ideas fall into the valley of death. And because it's a valley, trying to climb up takes a lot of effort. A lot of effort, a lot of money, a lot of behavior changes, 
a lot of trust building. And ladies and gentlemen, our VIPs, VIPs, a lot of ideas fail. A lot of novel ideas that has a lot of potential fail to bridge this gap. Part of the reason is because they don't quite understand the, the innovation value chain. That's why we have this Bernas, Bengkel Rantai Nilai Innovasi, Slango, to understand how do we overcome this value of that? Not just through money. It's you, there are things, especially for innovation, you can throw billions. It doesn't mean it'll work. We have seen some ideas that fail because, not because of money. Money is there, but other elements were not properly apl uh, applied, aligned, and used. Yeah, so we want to make sure novel ideas. And other day, do VIPs. You know, you develop ideas. You're doing final year projects. Yeah, even those of you who are doing analysis, you're trying to discover, okay, which way is best? That's also part of the innovation value chain. And we want your ideas to succeed. Slango wants your ideas to succeed. Menteri Besar wants your ideas to succeed. We want to get as many novel ideas out there to support our social economy. Notice that I say social economy, not just economy, but also social. So people will benefit from the economic growth. Yeah. So this is direct from Menteri Besar. We have to make sure our ideas, novel ideas become innovasi, not innovasi. So moving on. Here's the challenge. There are tons of ideas coming in. Tons of ideas. Tons of ideas. But we have to filter out which ones really deserve our resources. Which ones we should keep in view or uh, KIV. Which ones we have to check out? Because we have limited resources, remember? We have limited resources here. There we go, limited resources. We don't have infinite resources, except maybe even the sun. One day the sun will die. So to say that it's an infinite resource, practically to us, to human beings, it's infinite. Yes? Because a lot of us will die before the sun dies. So unlimited ones, but there are limited resources. So how do we actually make sure that ideas that you have, some of you in engineering, some of you in life sciences, some of you in bank business management, IT, how do you convince people that our ideas should be selected from the bulk of other ideas? Yeah. So we need idea championing. We need idea championing. It's just a slight digression. Anybody remember this company? Anybody remember this company? Do, do you know what it's called now? Anyone? Maybe you can type in the chat box. Not quite sure whether I can access the chat box. Here. Okay, nobody's typing in the chat box. Hey, but there's 77 of you. What? What is it? Yeah, Tika. Almay Ashraf, yes, you guys are switched on. Thank you, VIPs. No, I grab. Azlia, not sure, but it's okay. Everybody else is mentioning it. It's grab. Yeah, it's grab. It's grab. It was born. It was born in Malaysia, but as usual, a lot of good ideas are taken up by other people. We have to avoid this, yeah. Adik Adik VIPs. We we have to avoid this. This is an indication that our ideas are good. Our ideas are good. For example, the Swiss Innovation Challenge. Uh, this year is hosted by UMK in Klantan. The Swiss ambassador came and spoke. I asked the Swiss ambassador at the time, 2017, when I was the mentor. I asked the question, Your Excellency, why, why come to Malaysia? He said, when it comes to actually generating ideas, identifying problems and generating ideas, to what the items that Dr. Hazik mentioned just now, eh? so don't forget that. Dr. Hazik mentioned just now, hey, Malaysia is good. The cost of generating ideas in Malaysia is lower than in Switzerland or in other countries. So we are good. They acknowledge we are good when it comes to generating ideas. When it comes to implementing, this is what we're talking about. Championing ideas is under idea implementation. Let me just backtrack a bit, VIPs. Eh? Hang on, let me see whether I can backtrack. Just, just quickly backtracking. Eh? Backtracking, just a reminder on what Dr. Hazik showed earlier. Hang on, uh, let's see. This one. Yeah, remember Dr. Azik showed this? Remember, yeah? So here is the creative element. We need this. But here, the implementation. Here is where the ambassador said, we are not so good. We're not so good. So our ideas 
Let me forward through the slides. Our ideas go through this particular funnel that you saw earlier. Yeah, Malaysian ideas come here, being developed and whatever you, at the end of the day, who benefits? Is it Malaysians? Is the Malaysian economy benefiting? We see that it's not, it's not really happening. So Selangor is taking the step to make sure that your ideas have a fighting chance to benefit Malaysians. Yeah. Ah, okay. So that's idea championing. Moving on to idea realization. This is where the ideas that we have, we make it happen. We make it have impact. And it's a challenge. Why? Just now we mentioned about championing ideas. Because part of the problem is communication. This diagram, you, you might find online. Yeah? You might find online. This, uh, this cartoon, I suppose, series of cartoons, shows what exactly does a customer actually want. I fast forward. The customer just wanted this, a swing using a tire. That's all the customer wanted. But sometimes because of communication, they explain it in a different way. And then because of communication issues, this happens. I, I know this sounds, this looks ludicrous. You might think, oh, cannot be la, this is not possible. Okay, VIPs, when I left academia, because I used to be a researcher, lecturer, yeah? I left academia and went into an industry, I saw this happen. This happens, this exactly happens. Even Rolls Royce and Airbus are not immune to it. This happened to them. Yeah? So, take, bear in mind, take note, this can and usually will happen, as, and especially when it comes to novel ideas. Novel ideas that have a chance to become innovasi. Yeah, innovations. So, bear, control this. You need to control this. This is a challenge. We'll talk about this afterwards. Here's another challenge. Now, this, what you see here, is a typical stage in project management. There's tons of material online that talks about project management. So I'm not going to die to, to uh, unpack it too much. Yeah. So you have here concept and initiation, how to start, definition and planning to define what exactly is the project about. Launch, launching the project, controlling the project, controlling the performance, measuring performance, and finally closing the project. So under all these, there are elements. All throughout these stages, there, there is risk management. Now, this here that you see here is typical for normal project management, where innovation, novel ideas are not part and portion, a part or parcel. Now, when we talk about novel ideas, it becomes more complicated because, uh, maybe Dr. Hazik has seen this because he's from Imperial College, eh? Part of the problem is this, conventional project management methods, they focus on linear activities, engineering, construction, and other technologies. What this means is that it assumes the technology has been developed. The technology is there, there's nothing novel. Yeah? Remember, innovation is not that. Innovation talks about novel ideas. So conventional methodologies like this that you see here are designed for Linear activities, technologies that have been developed, closed systems. Yes. So because it's a closed system, there are no new things. There's focus on operational control, 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 control. Sound, sound familiar? Tak? Control, control, control. Kami nak keluar dari the campus pun payah. Okay, that's another question. That's another, that's another point. Before I get into trouble with Quiz and Unicell, yeah, I'll get back to the slides. Yeah. So, a novel idea project management, you have to manage the risk because the technology sometimes is being developed. And there are changes. There are changes. There are risks. There are greater risks than just this. So normal project management methods, just remember, yeah, VIPs, normal project management methods need to be modified. You cannot use just this. You have to take into account novel technology development. You must take into account that there is a need for greater flexibility. This one, lower flexibility. If you use this to manage a research project, you're going to get into trouble. You are going to get into trouble. And we have seen this happen before. For more information, you can ask Dr. Azik. Dr. Azik, uh, what did Imperial College say? And can you discuss with him? 
But hang on. What further complicates idea realization? It further complicates things because there is culture. Innovation talks about introducing new ideas, kan? But culture that exists in organizations, it tends to be very stable. It revolves around people. If it's stable, and this is novel, it's not easy to marry them. It is not easy. Cut and nurturing an environment that continually introduces new ideas or ways of thinking, then translates them into action. Ini bukan mudah. Bukan anything, yeah? VIPs. It's not easy. It's not easy. That is the reason why the MB established the Jawatan Kuasa Pembudayaan Inovasi and Innovation, Enculturation of Innovation. Because he knows this is difficult. This isn't straightforward. And sometimes, even when we've generated it, we need to maintain. So, adik-adik sekalian, VIPs, we need you. We need you to actually help us make this happen. We can't do it alone. We cannot do it alone. Now, I remember I mentioned about this culture, right? way of thinking that exists in an organization. Now, because of that, organizations have legacies. They have legacy. Innovation tends to replace legacy. They replace what we currently have for something better. Yeah, for something better. Bear in mind, for something better. But because of that, here's legacy. For example, a legacy product. Because of that, we need to learn how to convince the current customer, current end users, that the new ideas here, here's a new idea, innovation product, the new idea is better. First, we have to convince them this is better. Then we have to manage to bring them to the new product. Then we have to shut down the old legacy product or legacy systems, products or systems, not just products. Eh? So this is not easy. This is difficult. This is difficult. First, we have to test. Hey, does this new idea work? Tak? Then we have to make sure that there's a handover from the old system, the old system. This is Then this is the new system. Yeah, This is the old legacy system. This is the innovative system or product. We have to manage this. This is very difficult. Very difficult. And if we don't manage this properly in realizing these ideas, people will say, why do we, oh, no, this is difficult. I'm not, I don't want to do this. Lah. And the customers will leave. They say, I'm not going to use this. And even if the customer, for example, is a big company and they force their, their, their clients or their staff to use it, when you switch over, they will complain. So the stress level will maintain, will actually be high throughout. That's bad. That is bad. So we need to actually learn how to manage that. We need you. We need you to help us. Yeah? We need you to help us. And sometimes, talk about VUCA, kan? VUC, VUCA. Sometimes VUCA not planned. For example, here, the teacher says, okay, the person with the longest hair gets to talk first. And everybody starts cutting their hair. Okay, that was not intended. <laughs> that wasn't the plan. Yes, so VUCA, that's why it's VUCA, volatility, uncertainty. And this happens often now as, as, the, as time passes, VUCA is becoming, happening more often. And we are faced with a challenge here. So we need you to help us manage this with innovations. Here's another example, Nokia. Um, this particular saying or rather this particular quote has been associated with the CEO who said, we didn't do anything wrong. Well, sometimes there is such a thing as the drowning Kruger effect where people think they are right without realizing that they are wrong. They are so wrong. Yeah. Sometimes it's because people are stupid. That's what the drowning Kruger mentions. But that's not necessarily stupid. It's because you don't actually look at the challenges coming your way. That happened to Nokia. Happened to Nokia. So this is real, yeah? This is real, Adi Adi. VIPs, this is real. This is not just another university lesson. It's not. This is really happening out there and we need you to help us. How? We learn the innovation value chain and understand what is needed at every stage. Yeah, so here's another challenge, multiple stakeholders. We'll talk about this later, but here are multiple stages, multiple people, multiple stakeholders, different expectations, different target. Peningo. 
wasn't easy. Remember the combat I mentioned? I was responsible to manage the stakeholders. It was no joke. It was no joke. Within those two months of managing combat, I learned more about managing innovation than the past 10 years. So sometimes under pressure, you learn a lot more. But this is what we share. Lah. Yes. So at the end of the day, we want to realize these ideas so that the, the novel idea become innovasi because we want benefits, both tangible and intangible, economic, social, not just pure economic. Yeah? We don't want just pure economic. We want social values as well, intangible and tangible, which means this is difficult to measure. This is easy to measure. Trust. We want to build trust in technology so people trust in these new ideas that is realized so that Slango State has competitive advantage. We need this. We need this. Yeah. And finally, quality. We want to improve standards of living. Yes. So that even so that you know, salaries can go up, technologies make our life even better, and we can afford it. That's the most important thing. And that are the edits at VIPs is the end of my particular slide. So I'll stop sharing here. And ah, okay. And hopefully, most of you get the particular point. We need you to help us make this happen. Back to you, Bernard. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rahmat. So uh, probably any one of you, if you have any question, to write down the question in the comment box. Do you have any? Before we start with our next uh, session with Dr. Hazid, do you have a question? No? Uh, so um, let me just ask uh, one question. I don't know whether it's related or not to uh, your point in the slide, uh, Dr. Rahmat. So today in Malaysia, uh, we are going towards the uh, IR 4.0, right? In which uh, we need to accelerate uh, the Malaysia industry with the use of robots, AI, and also digital technologies. So how can, since you also graduate from mechanical engineering, so how can you relate this with the future of engineers in Malaysia? Because some people might say, uh, Malaysia don't need engineers, but only technician. I don't know. And also, uh, if we can see from many universities, uh, the intake of the engineering students is very low. So how can, uh, what, what can you say about that? Probably Dr. Rahman, over to you. Thank you, Puan Laili. Uh, so the question essentially is, is there still a need for engineering? Um, is there a demand, is there increased demand? For example, not just for engineering, but for indeed any particular B courses, masters, PhD. Now, um, let me put it simply. Uh, if I did not leave academia and go into industry, I would not have seen this. I would have thought, Okay, so Nabila has a question later, but we'll tackle that. Now, when I left academia, I went into industry. I then picked up certain things that industry never explained to universities. They never explained to academia. For example, they never explained what exactly are their real pain points, the sources of your problems. They just explain symptoms, gejala. That's it. So we think as academicians, we think, oh, these are the real problems because this is what industry says. No, they are quite poor. Industry is quite poor at explaining. Remember the diagram I showed about the, the, the swing? Mm. It really happens. And then who gets blamed? <laughs> and in Facebook, in social media, oh, we get blamed. Oh, why academia? Oh, hang on. You didn't explain it properly. That's our fault. Okay. But we have to take ownership. We have to take ownership. So when we take ownership of this to actually really find out, okay, what exactly is the issue? To tackle these issues, we need, we need people with high or deep cognitive understanding of what we are dealing with. That's why we need degree holders. That's why we need masters. That's why we need PhD people. If all that we are interested in is, okay, here's a problem. We got money. Let's just get, let's just buy technology from overseas. Then we won't need degree holders. All we need are just technicians to keep them running, get the yeah. machines running. So it's the focus of our industry. Now, I'm, we are beginning to see MITI starting to shift its focus. The last time, it did not. It focused on low value add industries where all they need are people with certificate, diploma holders, for example. Now, by all means, we needed those industries. We needed them because we were you know, moving from agrarian to, to a, a industrialized uh, society. So we needed those industries to create a base. 
and they've made billions for the country GDP. Alhamdulillah. But now we need to shift. We need to level up. That's where freeholders are required. In, in fact, not just in engineering, in all aspects. If we don't, what will happen is that we will not only fail to manage the technologies that we buy, which is happening now, actually, we won't be able to compete with the neighboring countries. We can't. And Selangor makes up almost a quarter of the country's GDP, a quarter, 25%, 24%, as a matter of fact. So Selangor can't afford not to be there, not to have this capability. We need you, especially the idea, the VIPs. We need you to really up your game. And believe you me, inshallah, Selangor is up there, will actually help you along the way. We'll help, we will help you along the way. That's essential. Yes. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the information. So I think uh, we do need engineers in the future, right? See, uh, as what uh, Dr. Ahmad said, because we are shifting towards that. Uh, okay, so uh, we have a few questions from the uh, our final year project student, but I think we take that after the end of the session. So next, we will invite uh, Dr. Hazid to continue with uh, um, his next session. Okay, over to you, Dr. Hazid. Thank you, dear moderator. Uh, okay, so uh, on the second part, uh, I will talk about uh, what kind of challenges face as an academician uh, uh, during the, the throughout the value uh, the value chain. Okay, so let me uh, share my slide first. Screen. Okay, all right. So, uh, as as mentioned by uh, Dr. Rahmat before, so 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 uh, during the the innovation uh, process, so there are some challenges faced. Uh, not just the acquisition, even at the industrial part. Okay, in the industry, there is uh, challenges faced by them. But uh, let's look at the issue or challenges uh, uh, that is happening uh, at the academic level. Okay, so the first one. So the first one, uh, I would say, uh, this is also part of the academic culture where you have to publish or perish, okay? So, so this, this, this saying of publish or perish uh, make uh, all the lecturers are focusing on publishing paper rather than uh, whether the research is uh, worthy to be explored for commercialization, okay? So this is a big issue because um, there are some the, some lecture with an entrepreneurial mindset, but uh, if we look at, at, at the, the culture in the university, those with higher publication are the one usually rewarded uh, in terms of salary as well as recognition. Okay, so, so, so that's why uh, usually uh, as an academician, they prefer to publish uh, rather than focusing whether uh, this particular research uh, have the potential for commercialization or not. And because of that, a lot of good ideas stay in the university and they're not coming out, okay? So there are a uh, lack of positive culture here to support uh, the lecturer who, uh, who, who would like to explore uh, the commercialization aspect, okay? Number two is uh, the issue with the finding and time. So this is also part of uh, the limited resources issue faced by the academician. Uh, so, so sometimes in the university, we have a very good idea, a very uh, um, uh, higher potential um, research, but due to one is uh, mainly the funding, we couldn't secure the, the, the right funding. Um, uh, and this will cost uh, this groundbreaking research stall at the university level, okay? And, and then number two, uh, especially uh, certain um, due to the KPI, okay? Uh, so the target every year. So there is no time for the researcher or the lecturer to explore their research further because they have so many things to do. They have to publish, sometimes they have to do marketing, they have to... Uh, teach as well. So because of all this burden, uh, I, I wouldn't say burden, but because of all these uh, things that they have to tackle within a certain period of time. So this is also 
you know, the challenges faced by academician uh, in order to, to make sure that their innovation can, can, drive, uh, can be driven forward because, because it was hindered by the funding as well as timing, okay? And then number three, uh, we're talking about IP control, okay? Uh, you, so, so the where sometimes there are there are a party of interest, the industry who who like to to collaborate with the university, but then they couldn't find an agreement for who will have the right for the products. Okay, so this is also an issue faced by the university, and I, I think uh, one reason is because. The, the main goals are different. So the, the university usually, they, they are looking at uh, uh, disseminating the knowledge uh, as well as, uh, of course, uh, the university, they're looking at uh, climbing the rank. But uh, for the industry, they're looking at uh, profit-based uh, uh, aspect, okay? So, so they're looking at if, if they, they, they invest in this particular product, uh, what, what sort of profit that they will earn. So, so due to of this disparity, sometimes um, it could hinder the innovation, okay? And then the last one uh, is uh, what we call as my perception, a, a short-sighted um, uh, short view uh, by, by, by the academician. So they, they are, I would say, naive to realize that sometimes uh, what are they exploring has been solved in the industry, okay? So, so, so this, this have uh, an issue. Uh, this is, uh, the issue comes because they doesn't do the right work, groundwork in the initial part. So the, the problem statement is not clear enough. And then the, the, uh, the idea generation is, is not properly designed. And because of that, sometimes uh, they thought that they come up with a, a right product or they, they thought that, oh, this one, uh, uh, this one have a very good novelty and it will solve the issue. But in the end, it couldn't, um, uh, it, could, it, it is not supported by the, by, by the public because, because that is not the real problem. That is not the root cause, okay? If you remember last week, uh, I think Dr. Rama shared uh, about the spreader, uh, the one that, that, that will melt the butter and it doesn't take off. So this is one of the reasons because of the short-sightedness um, from the innovators. So uh, the reason I share all these four challenges is because uh, we, uh, as a researcher, you as a student, the VIP, as Dr. Ahmad said, uh, you need to, 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 to try to maneuver all of these challenges and, and ensure that uh, the research that you are working on have, uh, will be able uh, or have a chance to, to be developed and mature as an innovation, uh, an innovative product. So by realizing all of these challenges, you can be prepared and as well as uh, uh, you know how to maneuver around um, your final year project. So that's why uh, this is the reason of um, which sharing what are the challenges that you might be face, that you, you will face uh, while doing your research. So I, I think uh, it will be a very short one for, for this, uh, this part. So uh, I rather receive a question and then we, we go from there. Thank you. I go to you, moderator. Thank you very much, Dr. Hazid. So I think I will um, read out the question from one of our uh, students uh, to you, Dr. Hazid. Uh, so what is the more important elements in idea championing? Oh, okay. So uh, I think that question, uh, 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 sorry, but I think Dr. Rahmat should answer that one. So he, the people in the industry can answer that better. <laughs> but I can, uh, if you allow me, I can may maybe try to answer the second one, I think. Okay, maybe. can, can, can. Yeah. Yes. So, so the second question, yes, the second question is, uh, we are recommended to develop an innovation, but as Dr. mentioned earlier, we experience a limited resources uh, challenges. So what we can do dev to develop this innovation uh, without worrying all those uh, challenges? All right, thank you. So, uh, uh, since the question come from the student, I think I think th this kind of limited resources issue shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be the burden to the student. Okay. So so so, but 
as an academician, uh, what we hope is there should be a strong ecosystem, uh, especially in the university. So the, there are uh, uh, people, especially uh, RMC, they, they, they will play their roles to find the right funding uh, and offering the right uh, grant so that a researcher and academician uh, can, can secure funding for the research. And then we need to have a proper support system, like um, in terms of, uh, if you remember, I mentioned earlier, we have Google Scholar, but, but some of the papers uh, need to be paid. So, so the university should provide all these resources so, so that the, the early stage of research can be done properly. Uh, so, so I think to answer that question, the, the student, you as the VIP, shouldn't be worried about this. So this is uh, the responsibility of your supervisor uh, to help you uh, and, and so that you can focus with your research uh, and, and, and together you, you have the right ecosystem. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hazi. So, um, Okay, I think before I pass to Dr. Rahmat, probably Dr. Rahmat want to start with uh, answering all uh, the question just now. About, uh, one, about you, you, yes. Before we continue, lah, about the important elements in idea championing. Right, of course. Thank you very much, Ponali. Uh, and of course, thank you to Nabila for asking the question. Yeah? So Nabila asks, what is the more important elements in idea championing? And, you know, thank you you are actually anticipating the next set of uh, material that I will present, but let me just give you a quick flavor of what we'll be talking about. There are really three elements that we found. It's not only three, but there are more. There are more, but we found that if you were asked, if we were asked to actually list them and prioritize, which ones are the most important? The three top most important elements are, one, cognitive understanding of what you do. In other words, whatever course you take, journalism, life sciences, biology, biotechnology, IT, you have to know your stuff. You have to know your stuff. Yeah? Because when you know your stuff, you can quickly filter out information that's not relevant. You're going to face a lot of information overload, tons of information, tougher than our time. Our time when we wanted to find information, we will go to the library and start looking at those, what do you call those catalog cards? I forgot, there's a name for it, the catalog cards in the library. The name escaped me. But uh, those, of, uh, yeah, those of us who, uh, who lived it or grew up in those uh, times, look us up. Very difficult to find information, but your generation has tons of information coming your way, even if you're not asking for it. So with the cognitive understanding, you can filter out. That's one of the most important aspects. Secondly, you need to have paralanguage skill sets. Now, you might be wondering, para, para what? Parachute, no, error language. Error language really encapsulates two elements that we want to focus on. One is the ability to make use of body language in presenting information. Industry looks at this. Huh? Industry actually observes how you present. Because remember, they have limited resource. Again, we get back to limited resource that the quest, uh, another question asked, as well as uh, Dr. Hazik pointed out. We have limited resources. Industry would actually have to make a tough decision is going to really deliver on what they promise. So paralanguage, inflection, uh, um, body language, important. Inflection, choice of words, choice of words. Yeah, choice of words. I'll unpack this afterwards, why this is important. And the third element, yeah, on top of cognition, as well as paralanguage is communication chemistry. Now you might be wondering, I know chemistry, but communication chemistry? It's actually your ability to measure whether what you presented makes sense. The audience understood what you just said. Very important, especially when you want to champion your ideas. You can't just do a typical pitching. You know, there's a lot of pitching competition these days. Pitching, 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 pitching. 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 Okay, great. Um, but the audience didn't get it. I remember one of my earlier pitching Pitching again, I call it pitching, pitching, which is supposed to be buy-in, not pitching, buy-in. And the chief operating officer went like this. I kid you not, that was the facial expression. 
And I was wondering, wait, does that mean that the person is interested, excited, or really confused? I found out it was a third one. So these are the skill sets which we will unpack after this. But great question, Nabila. Thank you. Okay, so I think uh, Dr. Ahmad already addressed the uh, second, uh, the third question, right? But however, probably just to answer again on the question, the challenge. So in point form, probably Dr. Ahmad, in point form, uh, what, is the what are the challenges? Oh, well, this one, I think both me and Dr. Aziz, we can unpack till the cows go home. But <laughs> um, okay, the main challenge, the uh, main challenge, mm. What, what I found interesting is this. Different parts of the world have different main challenges. Different parts of the world. Like in Malaysia. Yes. For example, so in, in Malaysia? Like okay. for example, in uh, industry? Okay. In or Malaysia, Malaysia in industry. Yeah? So Malaysia in industry. So in industry, the main challenge is lack of trust in ideas being developed. Whether the ideas come from universities or the ideas come from the industry itself, even if the idea was developed internally. So there is lack of trust. Now with IT systems coming online, yeah, digital trust becomes an issue. So that is the main challenge right now in making sure novel ideas are used and becomes innovasi, not innovasi. Okay, so I think uh, that should answer the question. So uh, let's continue again with the uh, last part of the session with uh, Dr. Rahmat. So over to you, Dr. Rahmat. Um, okay, I go first. Okay, right. And, no worries, oh, no worries. Uh, should, eh, Dr. Hazi already done just now. So okay. Dr. Rahmat so, will be the last part of the day lah, for the session. Okay. Today. Oh, yes. Ralik, Ralik dengan orang lupa kita. My apologies. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my apologies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please excuse me. Uh, allow me to actually present in English and Bahasa Utara. I hope. I hope that's okay with you. I really, I'm really bad at Bahasa Balayu Baku. Bahasa Utara senang. Okay, right. Getting back to the slides. And just now, we actually stopped here. Talked about, hang on, just a start. Before we talked about the importance of idea realization, making sure that the ideas are realized, happens. Eh? So we talk about idea championing. Now let's refer to this again. Just quickly, idea championing, in essence, is actually championing novel ideas so that you get resources to do, to implement. To succeed, you have to manage these stakeholders. You have to understand. End users, they need to be convinced. And of course, you have to present to them. This in itself is a challenge. Because in order to present, you need to actually create those channels. You have to build those channels to get the end users. Now, if you're talking about selling tudong, or selling food, yes, you can actually make use of online systems, social media, whatever you, but certain high-end solutions, you can't use that. Just doesn't work as effective. So building those channels are required, but you can. There are people, there are organizations, there are companies that can help you do that. To convince the end users, now that is a skill set that we need to devise and develop. Secondly, an active supporter. Now, these are not just the idea champ uh, idea champions. The, okay, let me just look at the idea champion first. So you need an idea champion, somebody who can really get the idea across, have the skill sets that we mentioned just now that I will unpack in a bit. Yeah, the skill sets of you know uh, uh, cognition, paralanguage, as well as communication chemistry. Sometimes you have to define, you have to train these people actually. You have to refine and train them. Yes, so they need to actually carry out the communication of the idea and most importantly, take ownership of those ideas. That means if there are questions, if there are queries that the idea champion isn't familiar with, an idea champion needs to figure out, okay, I know who can answer this question and channels those. There are times when idea champions don't understand that function and queries or questions are ignored. You lose the opportunity. Active supporter, you need to have the middle person can provide the resources, yeah, who can actually provide resources. Now, when we talk about resources, not just money, as Dr. Hazik pointed out and unpacked just now, you need people, you need time, you need support, you need physical as well as social support, psychological and social support, and that's important. We forget that we are human beings. And when it comes to actually getting these ideas across and want, or winning people, 
you need active supporters who understand those resources. So, okay, moving on. Um, can now everyone see the slide changing uh, to how to get trust? Anyone can confirm with me? So I'm getting some messages here that it's not clear. Malayli, can you confirm? Nampak, nampak. Okay, nampak, nampak. Thank you. Yes. Okay, thank you. So now, mention, just now we talked about trust eh? because novel ideas, they are new. You need to win over people's trust. What exactly is trust? People believe in what you deliver even though there is a risk to them. If there's no risk, there's no trust. Yeah? That's the definition of trust. If, for example, the technology that you roll out has no risk to the end user, then there's actually no issue of trust. People can use it. I mean, there's no risk to me. Okay, I can take it. So trust here always refers to the presence of risk. Do that, we need to show capability. We must show that we can do it. Or even if we don't have the capability at the time, we can show that, okay, these are the steps we will take to make sure we have the capability. Then you have to have humanity. Now, I'll, I'll mention about humanity and unpack it in a bit. Integrity. Integrity here means when you promise something, you can deliver. Or if something goes wrong, because we are talking about novel ideas, sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes things don't go the way we plan. Integrity here also means, when you talk about innovation, yeah, the ability to make up for whatever problems that arise. For example, you're behind schedule. You're supposed to promise at this point in time. Then you say, okay, this is the plan. We are going to make up for the lost time with more resources, more people. Then you, you actually make up for the delay. That's integrity. It's not just the typical definition of integrity, building integrity and whatever. It's really that. In innovation, it's deliver on your promise or make up for your failure to deliver on those points. And finally, the humanity angle. Now, this is very important for Industry 4.0 because now, if you talk to experts in, in IR 4.0, you're going to get the same response. I say experts, they're not vendors. I want to dis dis distinguish between the two. Not experts, but they're not vendors, but experts. Experts in Industry 4.0 will highlight the main core of IR 4.0 is people. IR 3.0, yeah, the machines, the products, how fast we can get them out. IR 4.0 talks about the people. The focus goes back to people. How do people extract maximum value from whatever technology or system that you develop? How do you win over their trust? How do you actually highlight that we always have the humanity's interest at heart? Yeah, this is also to answer the question by, I think I did Justin Leong in YouTube, yeah? about preparing yourself for IR 4.0. Never lose sight that it's people at the end of the day. It's not about the technology. A lot of vendors will tell you a different story. Ah, this is one thing. As an, as an industry representative, my apologies if a vendor comes to you and just starts telling about the technology, but you as the VIPs, uh, as the young generation for not just Langor, for Malaysia, indeed the globe, well, always look at the humanity angle. Yeah, whatever technology, look at the humanity. That, that is really Industry 4.0 and the Society 5.0 that Japan is talking about. Yeah, So, so that's ID championing on trust. Now, I mentioned just now some of the factors. Paralanguage, very important. The use of language, selection of words, congruence between the words that you use and the messaging. And this leads into the cognition as well. I'll give you an example. Yeah. When you present to industry, or sorry, let me rephrase that. When you present to academia, academia expects you to be able to unpack very complicated ideas, use sophisticated words. That's understandable. So you need to have that skill. But when you present to industry, when you present to industry, industry needs to digest your words quickly. Don't use complicated words. This is where a lot of VIPs miss out. They use very bombastic words and whatever you. It's not that the industry cannot understand. It takes them more time and it doesn't help you win their resources. It doesn't help you win their trust. They will look at that. They will hear the words you use and say, you know, you don't wait. You're wasting my time. You don't really care whether I understand or not. Yeah. 
So it's important. And congruence, the words and the way you pronounce, the way you present your words is a very important way of ensuring congruence. I'll give you an example. If you're talking about a technology that will save lives, uh, technology that will save lives, select a persona that reflects the fact you are saving lives. Don't use a persona, but persona, for those of you studying marketing, you would know what that means. Yeah? Persona essentially is a way of presenting that reflects on the messaging. If you're talking about technology that saves lives, use a persona that highlights you're saving lives. Don't use a persona with an inflection, with a tone that says, we're saving lives. I have seen this actually in finals of buy-in competitions, international competitions. I've been a judge and chief judge of these competitions. I've seen that. Total incongruent. Total incongruence. Avoid that. Yeah? When you're championing those ideas. And this is important. This is where we can help researchers yeah, especially my, people like Dr. Hazik get their ideas across because Dr. Hazik needs to focus on the research. We can't expect uh, academicians to be doing the selling as well. It's not congruent. So we have to help. Are there VIPs? We need your help. We need your help. There are a lot of ideas out there. If each and every one of you can help get those ideas across to end users, to industry, super. Now, finally, communication chemistry, measuring whether the audience understand what you mentioned. This is a skill set that's very that's lacking, not just in engineering students, across the board, actually, across the board that we've discovered. For your information, I've been involved in reskilling graduates into high value industries like aerospace, space, IT, uh, as well as building information modeling. And we find that a lot of graduates lack this ability to understand whether what they said, what they presented, the audience understood. So this is, a, this is something that we can look at. And this is what Bernas is part of. Bernas will train our candidates in the cognition, paralanguage, and communication chemistry. This is what we are doing. This is exactly what we're doing. One of the things we're doing. So just, I want to actually recap what you just mentioned. Know when to act and respond. Identify friends or foe because there will be people who block your presentation or your move forward to get the ideas across. You build credibility. You are credible. You have the capability, you have the integrity, and you have the humanity. There, there are challenges and barriers. There was a question just now, I think, from Mr. Dino Asuka, I think, about challenges and barriers. Uh, the barriers will always be there, actually. That's why we do degree. That's why we do master's. That's why we do PhD, to really understand those challenges and barriers. So, for example, if somebody says, ah, it's not worth it doing master's, it's not worth doing a PhD, it's worth it. It's worth it. But you have to know what barrier you plan to tackle. You need to know what barrier you plan to tackle. So, okay, that's idea championing. I want to move on to, okay, here we go, some elements just now. Technical cognition, paralanguage, and corpus linguistics. Corpus linguistics refer to the way we use language and communication chemistry. Uh, I want to skip through to idea realization now. Time, okay, I've got about five minutes, yeah, Puan, Puan Ali, about that? Okay. So idea realization, just now, Dr. Hazik showed the innovation value chain, yeah? the aspects of innovation value chain. And we talk about idea implementation here. Oh, hang on. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah? Notice, yeah? design thinking, for example, methods of managing ideas. Design thinking is here. Design thinking is a good way of developing and you know, refining your idea generation. RDCI, this is one of, this is the prevalent innovation value chain model being used in Malaysia. It's here. It doesn't really dive deep into idea implementation, but it's also a method. So we need to understand where those methods lie when we want to implement ideas. Understand their strengths, understand there are limitations. Understand there are limitations, yes. How do we actually go and learn further how to manage this? You can take a look at the Oslo manual for your example, for your information. The Oslo manual that Dr. Hazik mentioned just uh, earlier on, it's actually OECD's guidelines on managing innovation. The 2018 version is the fourth edition. So they've had three other uh, discussions already. 2018 is the fourth edition. And there's an ISO standard for innovation management. That is already an ISO standard. So we can take a look at these to understand, ah, so this is how we implement ideas. And part of implementing ideas is project management. However, again, I just want to highlight project management 
normal project management assumes everything has been developed. When you're managing innovative ideas, you need innovation project management. There are higher risks. So understand the risks that is associated with all of these stages, the goals, the planning, the control, teamwork, costing. Yeah, understand that. Yeah, innovation, innovative ideas are more risky than normal projects. Yes, but once we manage those risks, first we have to capture those risks. Again, I problem identification that Dr. Hazik mentioned. Now we have risk identification. Yes, so that's more work, but there are greater returns. That's why we do innovation. So I managed ident identifying those particular risks and understand that VUCA can happen anywhere. Anywhere, VUCA can affect project management, innovation management, process management. So understand that that can impact. Sometimes we can't measure it, but what we can do is at least identify those intangibles. Yeah, you need to identify. And that's why we do the Greek programs. And aligning your ability to deliver with what can the technology do? What exactly are we aiming for? This yeah, this, this focus on what exactly is the value to be delivered, you have to manage this. Because as Dr. Hazik mentioned, sometimes we forget this. We keep focusing on what can the technologies do? At the end of the day, hey, what, what was it that we set out to do? Uh? I forgot. Uh? And the commercial people, now business, uh, business VIPs, you have to take a look at, okay, how do we actually make sure that this can be monetized? In other words, you can actually make money out of it and you can support the social economic impact. This is, this is becoming more and more important. Now with the SG, yeah? the uh, Sustainable Goals, the DSG, it becomes more important to manage or select the right business models to make sure what the engineers can do and what we want to achieve happens here. I'll, I'll skip over this innovation drivers because these are things that you're familiar with. But just a quick quiz. Something that we, rarely, we, we know at the back of my own mind, but we rarely think of networks. Networks. So here's Adam, here's Matt. Both of them are linked to five people. So here's a quiz. Adam's networks look like this. They are more cohesive. Matt's networks or Matt's networks are more diffuse. So the question is, Whose network is better? Anybody would like to actually wager? Adam or Matt? Whose network is better? Uh, kita buat quiz kejap. Anybody? Adam. Okay, there are those who say Adam. Say, type, 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 type. Matt, there's those who say Adam. Uh, there's those who say Matt. Uh, okay. There's difference in opinion, which is good. In innovation, we need difference in opinion. It's called creative friction. And Dr. Hazik, you know, Dr. Hazik doing research, kan? he would know. Kan? Okay, some researchers say, this is the best way. This one, no, this is the best way. Okay, let's, let's do a short research quest, research RQ here. Okay, there are those who say, Adam, okay, equal, almost equal. Lah. I can't see on YouTube. I wonder how many people are saying Adam and how many people are saying Mike on YouTube. Can, can anyone just quickly check? I can't really see it, uh, the YouTube right now. About the same, guys. Well, about the same, okay. okay. Hang on, I'm counting here. I think Adam is slightly ahead, right? Slightly ahead, slightly ahead. But still, we have people who say, no, 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 Matt's network is better. Okay. Now, why does this matter? This matters because, yeah, again, we have limited resource. We have limited resource. And we have different stages, different phases of the innovation value chain. Yes? On top of that, social capital that I highlight here is already included in the DASA STI Negara 2021-2030. So this is part of what will drive the national policy, social capital. So the answer is... Selepas ini. Let me just explain straight away. So the answer is, ladies and gentlemen, Adam's network is better for implementation. Matt's network is for better for creative. Why? Because Matt's network taps into isolates, into silos that will have different opinions, different perspectives. 
And that is what we need to generate ideas. Remember idea generation that Dr. Hazik mentioned? So these kind of networks are more useful for creative part. But Adam's networks are better for the implementation. So Adam has more social capital for implementation. Matt has more social capital for creative portion. So we need to understand this. We need to understand this so we can manage the innovative idea as it tries to become an innovation. Yeah, um, but today I think that will be enough. Uh, just a quick introduction to social capital. So bear in mind, you need to banish the VCA, manage the project from an innovative perspective so that all the aspects that Dr. Huxley mentioned just now, you know, where the problems can be identified, how do you actually generate ideas, then how do you champion the ideas and make sure you can implement them, become a successful idea, happens. Let's work together, ensure that that happens in Islam. Back to you, Wan. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ahmad. So, um, okay, so we have a few questions from the audience. Uh, the first question is, uh, how do we get the funding for an innovation project? Okay, since uh, many uh, projects will require funding. And in the US, there's a TV program called Shark Tank, okay, in which uh, they will uh, acquire the, the funding. So uh, in Malaysia, do we have that certain uh, type of a program? Uh, Dr. Ahmad, this is from Amir Rizwan from UNICEF. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Ame, Ame for the question. We used to, years ago, we used to, I remember, that's cafe, I think, but I believe, cafe challenge, I think. In, we used to have a few. As a matter of fact, the winner was the team that developed the red light, green light parking system. Oh, sorry, hang on. I think they were just the number two. Number two. The first idea somehow didn't go very far. The second idea went far. Ah, uh, I remember that because, hey, that's what they came up with. Yeah, very simple, very simple sensor. And it's not about the idea per se, it's how they implement. Yes. So I don't seem or whether there is a, such a TV show. Is there one, Dr. Zika? Is there one? An Astro government? I don't think there is one at now, but I think they used we used to have several. I think the second one is on KitKat one. Oh, KitKat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. I remember that one. <laughs> Mm. Okay, so that, that is the before. La. So uh, currently, what, what are the fundings that are available for them if they have uh, these uh, innovative ideas? So I think that is the question. Um, yes, I believe at least at the federal level, there is Jayasan Innovasi Malaysia's grassroots level funding that focuses on ideas that will benefit the grassroots. For example, a simple um, palm oil fruit bunch collective. Palm oil fruit bunch, where it falls to the ground, a lot of the palm oil fruit comes off. Now, this is something a lot of people don't know. When the fruit bunch or the fruit comes off the fruit bunch, some sort of process happens that the fruit starts to generate more oil. So it's actually more productive. That's why you take the empty fruit, the fruit bunch and then you process them, you beat them and whatever, you, because the process actually generates, somehow generates more oil. So those fruit bunch, it's actually worth more. So, but to collect them is back breaking job. So people come up with collectors and Yayasan Innovasi Malaysia funds those. So whichever technology that is perceived to be bad, to be beneficial for the, to the um, people, general public, as well as to improve industries at a lower level, Yayasan Innovasi Malaysia would definitely be a, a good panel. And I have to be frank here, I believe, and I have experienced that Yayasan Innovasi Malaysia is one of the most effective agencies when it comes to managing patients. Far more effective than the other agencies that I would rather not mention because then I'll get in trouble again. Okay, very good. So maybe we do have uh, funding from all this uh, Yayasan, right? So therefore, uh, we have one more question. Um, uh, the question is from UNICEL uh, FYP student, Khairi Afid. So based on your experience, doctor, how critical the technical idea nowadays falling into innovation value of them. So either Dr. Hazi or Dr. Ramad would like to answer the question. Uh, 
Kata has it? Okay, we we'll go on. <laughs> All right, uh, let me read the question again. Uh, how critical the technical idea now this field into innovation phases? Okay, so uh, I think I, 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 as Dr. Rahmat mentioned earlier, that there are, uh, it is actually common for ideas fall into the valley of death. So that's why it is uh, crucial. Uh, one is uh, at the early stage that you, you plan it properly, you, you really find the right uh, problem statement and the right idea to tackle. So, so that then, then the, the likelihood for it to fall into the value of death is uh, reduced significantly. So that is one of it. And then also, I think the, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the ecosystem and what Dr. Rahmat pointed out is very good about the psychological support and all that. So, so, so like, so all of this support is important to help the innovators. Uh, so, so then, uh, so, so basically, uh, all of this should come together uh, to to ensure that we, we will not fall into the value of that. So that's my answer. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hazi. So I think that will be the last for the uh, session. But however, we still open because our session will finish at eleven thirty. We still open for question uh, either from a YouTube audience or also from our Zoom audience or Facebook. Do you have any question? Uh, you, can, you can ask question to our panels. Any question? Well, Ali, I think there's a question because I actually have YouTube. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, that just open continue, as well. yes. Yes, I think there's a question from Adit Justin Leong. Oh yes, but I think oh I thought you already uh, addressed the question. Probably uh, Dr. Rahmat can continue with our ah, okay. adjusting loop. Yes. Okay, I think this is where me and Dr. Aziz we can take team and, and explain not just the adjusting, just team, but I'm sure inshallah there will be uh, more kids watching this afterwards. I've got a few who's now who wanted to watch, but they are in training at my center. So when yes. you talk about preparing yourself for Industry 4.0, yeah, uh, Justin, uh, I mentioned about the need. Look at how would technology influence or affect the people. Have to. Because at the end of the day, as it mentioned, that the problem who actually will benefit the bigger, the impact, especially for I mean, for the general public, the greater the value. I'll, I'll give you an example. So yesterday, or rather the past three days, I was actually judging uh, the innovation challenge hosted by Majlis Perbandaran Sepak, yeah, Sepak Municipal Municipality Council. So, they a lot of the competitors who actually came by showcase some of the technologies which, off the cuff, looks like very simple. But, but when you look at the impact or the potential impact, it's massive. One example is the technology that was developed from by, if I'm not mistaken, the company SW Corp that does a lot of solid waste management. So, this uh, is yeah, solid waste. What, that, what does that mean? That means you know, the sampah that you put out, photo, the banana peel, yes, the, 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 the stuff that your mom has to pick up or your dad has to pick up from the sink because you don't want it to actually fall. And usually that's very icky. Very icky. Yeah. Has a lot of moisture, has a lot of water. So what they discovered was if all of us somehow dry our waste, especially the one that's wet, yeah? makanan. this is a makanan, kan? if we dry that, up to 90% of weight of the, of the, of the uh, waste can be reduced. And that has significant impact. And most importantly, it can reduce leachate production. Leachate is the water that comes out of waste that is wet. Now, leachate, yeah, you can read it up, yeah? Leachate. Let me type, type the spelling. A lot of people may not be familiar with Yeah? It's, yeah, this is the icky stuff. The one that we don't want to man, uh, think about. The one that you, you, know, you squirm when we see it come out from the lorry sampah, right? Guess what? That leachate at landfills, if it escapes into groundwater, apparently it will pollute the groundwater for 20, 30 years. 20, 30 years, it's going to pollute the whole area. So we have a responsibility, but how do we dry it? So they came up with a method that I think is relatively simple to be used by all of us. Hopefully, 
it is diffused. So that's their challenge. Huh? So there are times when you look at the impact. So just to simplify, look at how wide how widespread is the impact of your ideas. Start there, just did it. And also the idea the VIPs, the rest. Look at that. Look at that and measure. For example, you can measure one way to measure is the impact level and how many people will be influenced by that. Sometimes the impact may be small, but the number of people that's affected large. So that's one way to start. Okay, Dr. Ahmad, so okay, I think for the uh, for those uh, secondary school students, right? So in simpler words, what are their uh, preparation towards this uh, to prepare themselves in this uh, IR for zero? Either they should, uh, what, uh, critical thinking or what, uh, to be good in science or how can they prepare for that? I think in simpler uh, sentence lah, to them. Go into quiz and you yourself. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Let me try to answer that. Uh, okay, I that, 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 that. Okay. Yes. So like as as uh, I think like this goes to all uh, students uh, in school. So so how do you want to prepare yourself to stay relevant when you go to the uh, university level and later on to the career field? So I think uh, one one thing that that usually you I think you you heard. So you have to join extracurricular activities because because that is where you will develop your soft skills. So it is very important for you to develop the soft skills as well as now we're talking about STEM education. So, so that is where you develop your STEM skills, the logical thinking, your critical thinking, problem solving, all that is important in order for you to stay relevant uh, and competent uh, during uh, the, uh, to, to go to the career stage. So, so yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hazi. Uh, very uh, uh, insightful information and answer to those uh, our viewers here. So before we end the session, uh, probably uh, both Dr. Hazi and Dr. Rahmat would like to summarize uh, on the whole uh, seminar for today, or webinar for today. Uh, I will start with Dr. Hazi. All right, thank you, uh, moderator. So uh, just a quick recap uh, for... Uh, what uh, we shared today. So my part, I was talking about identifying problems and then idea generation. So uh, I would like to stress again, these two are very crucial uh, in the beginning of your research study. So you have to make sure that you find the right problem. What is the root cause? So, so you can use all the techniques that I've shared earlier in order to, to identify the problem and then how to generate the idea and make sure that you have more than one ideas and try to explore all of the ideas try to discuss not just with your uh, own supervisor you have to talk with people outside uh, not from your own field so that you get different perspective in order to ensure that uh, your your research uh, have have a very great potential uh, and uh, have a very good commercial value so that you'll be not part of those innovation that fall under the value of death. So I think that's uh, sum up uh, what I've been sharing today. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Hazi. So now uh, over to you, Dr. Ahmad, summarize. I would like to echo what Dr. Hazi mentioned because that conversation does not happen enough. That conversation with end users, potential end users to really understand what, what isn't the symptom of their problem but what really is in affecting them. Uh, also from, especially the social side, the social side and psycho psychological side, because when it really tackles the heart, the, the humanity side of those particular issues, whatever technology you develop, whatever systems or whatever you will really have an impact. If you develop something based on just your thoughts of what the end users would probably need, well, there are times that, yes, you can actually make money out of it, but it wouldn't make an impact to the people who need it most. So, yes, I absolutely agree. Thank you, Kuala. Okay, thank you, Dr. Rahman. So, I think that's the end of the session. And I would like to thank you also, Mr. Barhan and Mr. Fairo, who's working 
uh, together with us today. So uh, once again, thank you to Dr. Rahmat and also Dr. Hazid for such an uh, insightful session uh, today's uh, webinar. So to, for, to all audience, don't forget to join us again tomorrow, right? I believe. So 9.30 a.m. So with that, uh, thank you and uh, Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Dr. Rahmat. Thank you, Dr. Hazid. Uh, Thanks, everyone. Thank you semua. Assalamualaikum Dr. Ahmad, uh, Dr. Aziz, uh, Puan Laili. Terima kasih banyak. Uh, we, uh, we from Quiz, uh, AJK from Quiz, have to admit that this is this is an awesome session. And I believe, uh, and we also can see an active participation from the students. They're asking so many questions that the moderator unable to, it's very hard for moderator <laughs> to, to ask all questions to the panels. And then it's a very fruitful. And then, we from Chris would like to say a very big thank you to Dr. Hazi Azman for a very deep insight of innovation and then the sharing session from Dr. Hamad Shazi uh, uh, regarding the innovation ideas, the importance of idea championing. And then with the moderation session from Point ID, it's a very uh, successful event. And then we would like to congratulate and then to participants, all students from Chris and UNICEL. Uh, please don't forget to uh, sign in the attendance, yeah? Okay, so thank you, thank you, and a very big thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum. Ah, oh, sekejap, eh, sekejap. Eh. Encik Carol cakap kita ada photography session. Okay, so uh, semuanya boleh on turn on camera. Semua I'm going to position camera. myself just like so that this looks like hair. Uh, all position themselves just nice within the brain space. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, you know me, I'm actually a jovial fellow. I don't, I don't like to take things too seriously. So my apologies if everybody thinks that, ah, boy, Dr. Rama, can you just be a bit serious for once? It's a Saturday morning. Mm. It's okay. It's just uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Kero is going to, I will give the cue and Mr. Kero will start the photography session, yeah? Okay, one. Hold on, yeah. Yes, yeah, still, still waiting for the attendant, uh, the participant to turn on your webcam. Yeah. FYP student, Unicel, turn on your camera, please. Uh, may we have your cooperation to turn on your webcam. Thank you very much. Okay, smile. One, two, three. Okay, guys. Uh, freestyle. Freestyle. One, two, three. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank Unisal. You. Thank you, Chris. Thank you to all participants and students. And see Thank you, you all tomorrow. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum. Take care, everyone. Thank you, everyone.